Hi, everybody, and welcome tonight to the um, webinar on high frequency, the secrets of an invisible orthodontist. I am the um, uh, I'm honored to be with you tonight. I'm Dr. Donna Galante, and I'm going to share with you our story about uh, using uh, high frequency vibration to help our adult patients in particular in our practice. So it's a picture of our staff and my husband and I, we practice together. We have actually three locations in Northern California. And the question I think that, you know, I need to answer for you right away before I even begin to even share some patient stories. Why, you know, specifically why uh, VPRO5? You know, why, why did we start doing high frequency vibration? You know, what, what triggered um, this change? And it has to do with what I call what drives you crazy, or you might call them challenges. And we're at about an 85% share of chair with Invisalign. 100% adult Invisalign. So if you're an adult in our office, you're getting clear aligners, you know, specifically Invisalign. And I think for any of you listening to this webinar, you know sometimes that there's some things that can drive you crazy uh, about treating patients with aligners and specifically adults. And I'm going to focus mostly on, on the adult patient here, and that is compliance. And, and, I, and I've talked to a lot of doctors, and I think the consensus of the adult patient is the worst when it comes to compliance. And they tend to be the type that will say, oh, yeah, yeah, doc, I'm wearing them right and you know they aren't right and and then when you're first starting out with aligners you kind of think well something's wrong with you you set the clin check up wrong you didn't do it right or you know this whole thing isn't working right but the reality is i i can tell you probably at least you know okay yeah maybe sometimes the clin check wasn't set up right i'll give you that but probably 90 percent of the time the patient is not wearing them enough so compliance huge issue especially with the adult patient which then leads to the next thing that is a challenge and drives me crazy is treatment times. And you, you try to be, especially with um, aligners, you've you got to be efficient with your treatment time. You can't have patients having, you know, multiple refinements and, and multiple appointments. And back in the day when we were taking PVS impression, let me tell you, you wanted to finish that patient as soon as possible because you did not want to give them another PVS impression, right? A little bit easier now with the scanner and in a way it was too easy. But still, treatment time is, is critical um, to your bottom line. And for me, it, you know, it is obviously delivering a great result, but also doing it efficiently and in the minimum time possible, which then leads to number three that drives me crazy is getting these patients in, scheduling efficiency. And a lot of these adults, they work, you know, they have a lot going on. I remember when we were putting braces on adults, and like I said, we're 100% adult Invisalign, um, how hard it was to get them in, right? And those appointments were rather long, right? Because they always had a bracket or two off. There was always, you know, at least a half hour of just, you know, psychological counseling services that you were offering along with the orthodontic appointment. So getting these patients scheduled with brackets and wires, quite challenging, and they had to be seen often. With Invisalign, you can push them out. I mean, we, we push them out you know, 12 weeks at least, and in some cases up to 16 weeks. So you're looking at three or four month appointments. So scheduling efficiency is another critical thing that has driven us to look at ways to accelerate the treatment, especially of these adults. And then last but not least, obviously differentiation. How can we stand out? What can we offer? What service can we offer? Yes, we offer Invisalign, right? And you, you could probably, no matter where you are, there's somebody offering Invisalign. You know, it's rare for you to be like kind of the lone wolf in a stream of, of other doctors. So being able to offer a value-added service is huge. And standing out from the crowd saying, hey, well, all of our adult patients get this additional appliance, which is going to help your Invisalign work better and take away a lot of your discomfort. Okay, you'll notice some of the statements I'm making. Never tell them it's going to reduce their treatment by 50%. 
it's it's always it's going to allow the aligners to work better allow them to seat fully and it's really going to take away a lot of your discomfort so that's kind of what prompted us and that's that's our life. but the solution you know didn't come overnight right so the, the thing was okay let's ask some good questions like how do we get adults wearing his line aligners um, to finish treatment faster how can we get them to track better how can we reduce the discomfort you know we tried really hard to have patients change to seven days with adults right because all our teens were seven days and it was really hard they were complaining oh my teeth are so sore there's no way I can do it and you know I don't want to make patients have such an awful experience you know so we kept a lot of them on a two-week cycle well that just you know drags out the treatment right and again, drags out the treatment and they're still not tracking well because they're not wearing them full time. And I like number four, can we stop the inquisition? I used to feel like I was a, it was part of the inquisition every time they came in. You know, how many hours are you wearing it? Because like you'd look at them and you knew they weren't really doing the 22 and you were thinking that maybe they were just sleeping with them at night. But they would never admit that, right? So I always felt like Sherlock Holmes, like I was having to like dig deep and then I realized, you know, they didn't want to be, um, question deeply like that. I didn't want to waste my time doing it. Let's find another solution. How can we reduce the number of appointments? And this goes along with, by the way, the number of refinements, right? All these adults having like, you know, two, three, sometimes four refinements. It is a profit margin killer. And is there a way we can add value to our services? Is there something we can add when the patient comes in and we give them the, the treatment plan, the costs and the breakdown that we can say this is also uh, included in your treatment and is there an adjunct appliance that would solve these problems and is it pretty easy to use right you want to give people something that's easy right you've already asked them to wear aligners 22 hours a day you don't want to pile on a lot of extra duties okay people are busy so was there is there something out there that would fit the bill of all these questions and we discovered that there is, and there's a lot of science behind high frequency vibration. In fact, yeah, it's been around, right? It's it's really nothing new. Um, 1890s, bone adapts to loads under which it's placed. NASA had adopted high frequency vibration into its space program, so the astronauts had you know bone quality before space travel. And preclinically, looking at high frequency vibration showed a greater osteogenic effect, meaning that higher frequency nearly doubled the bone volume, okay, versus, say, low frequency. And again, another study that was done at Columbia and Stony Brook compared different devices, okay? So again, this is part of my why and how, our, how we were processing what we were gonna do. And again, looking at high frequency Vibration produced significantly greater osteoblast proliferation, okay? And it actually demonstrated it even in the retention state where there was actually no forces being applied. And what's interesting here is even on in this study, again, looking at the PDL, they found greater periodontal fibroblast proliferation. So it shows a positive effect on the periodontal cells. This is all good news. Clinical research done at NYU and Harvard shows patient discomfort decreasing. And, and what was interesting at the seven days was the lowest level, okay? And for us in our office, it's a seven day switch out to all the aligners. And we, we kind of made it this way just to keep things simple and set systems in place that everybody could remember and it wasn't complicated. So every patient in the office, doesn't matter if you are a um, mixed dentition, you know, Invisalign first patient, Invisalign teen, or you're an adult and you have one of these devices, you are on a seven day cycle. So there's, everybody is seven days, at least on their first initial set of aligners. It's a seven day cycle. And this bit of research kind of showed that was really probably the best as far as reducing the discomfort for the patient. And again, if you're thinking about um, 
obviously we're thinking about results and efficiency, but what about the patient experience, right? You know, having your patients actually go through the process and having a little to no discomfort, pretty amazing. And they're going to talk about it. And that's going to be good news for your practice. Accuracy, right? We were looking for aligners to track better, especially with the adult patient, right? Because quite honestly, they just don't wear them enough, right? And by adding this extra five minutes a day appliance, and it shows here, again, in the study by NYU and Harvard, that the seven days had a 90% aligner accuracy. Pretty remarkable. I mean, even at five days, it was pretty good, right? But, again, seven days was the max. And, again, showing an increased rate of tooth movement, you know, at the seven-day mark. And I just... It, it just verifies, like all this research, to me, just verifies what I'm going to show you when I show you some cases, how well high-frequency vibration works, how well it works. So five minutes a day, it's a piece of cake for the patients. I have some patients tell me they do it, you know, in their, keep it in their car, and they do it on their drive to and from work. And NYU and Harvard said that VPRO5 can improve accuracy while reducing the interval between aligner changes. Hence, for us, we went from 14 days to 7 days. Significantly reduced the pain. We have seen this, no doubt. And, of course, you know, unless we actually do a histological slides on our patients, I guess we're not going to see the bone remodeling and the cytokine markers. But, for sure, that is something that they have seen. And I'll show you some panos, which I think are pretty remarkable and, you know, showing, you know, a lot of times when you move teeth rapidly or with maybe excessive force, you see some widened PDLs. And these patients all have very normal looking PDLs in their, in their panos. And we'll look at that more closely. Some other clinical um, resources that I found to me were very compelling, the effect on tooth movement. Now this study that was done was a five day aligner exchange. And you can see how quickly that patient finished treatment. Uh, 34 aligners in 175 days. And again, the pain relief. To me, this is huge. It's a huge practice builder. You know, and we tell the patients, yes, this, this device will reduce and maybe even totally eliminate any discomfort. And you can see here the VPRO5 produced clinically a meaningful, immediate orthodontic pain relief. And what's further, even further along, it was extended meaning, you know, by the you know, end of the week, there was complete elimination of discomfort for 97% of the subjects. So again, um, those were some of the findings that I felt were compelling to me. And then when we went and actually started to utilize it pretty much on every adult patient, we started to realize, you know, a lot of what was discovered at these schools, you know, under research was happening clinically. And for those of us on the call tonight, most of us are out there, you know, practicing and treating patients and it's all about the clinical results and the clinical experience. So we're going to take a look at four patients. This is Lori, age 55. And uh, you can see class one, deep bite, some overjet, see number or the upper left lateral is severely rotated and lower lateral lingually displaced. And basically those are her two main, con main concerns. Um, Pano shows all the wisdom teeth have been removed, essentially a class one situation. So we're gonna go in and do Invisalign and uh, patients are given the Pro 5 as part of their treatment plan. It is not something that they, they opt for. It's, it is included in their treatment fee. So it's part of what they get. It's part of the full package we offer them. And they're, they're instructed on how to use, you know, they're instructed on how to use it the day they come in to get their attachments, their initial aligners, but it's all part of the package. They're told right away that they're getting this. It's not an option. So I'll show you her clin check. And, and I think, you know, um, the one thing that I've discovered with um, Vipro 5, the high frequency vibration is that Sometimes you can have a less than ideal clincheck setup, or you can 
maybe fail to you know, over rotate or over correct a certain tooth position and still kind of come out looking pretty good. And I think earlier I said that we wanted to um, have much more efficiency, okay, with treatment time, right? And treatment times, to me, the biggest problem I was seeing with all of my adults was just these multiple refinements and, you know, and teeth not tracking. So right away, you know, you can look at this and right away this tooth has the black dot, you know, you, and you know right away that's an advanced movement. Tooth is undergoing uh, some fairly significant rotation and extrusion. And the reality is, you know, probably I should have spent a little bit more time maybe overcorrecting that position a little bit more. I mean, it looks like I did a little bit of mesial in, but probably should have accentuated that a bit more maybe created a little bit more space around the tooth before I went ahead and, and approved it. But that tooth and the lower. So um, again, you know, the V profile will help you keep the patient tracking well, okay? But you still have to remember, you know, good aligner biomechanics. And if you have a tooth that's somewhat lingually displaced, a little bit of Overcorrection is probably not a bad idea. So in this particular case here, this tooth should have been moved forward maybe an additional millimeter. And this tooth probably rotated, you know, inward probably another two or three degrees. Just to really make sure that, you know, because you even you get some aligner lag even with the VPro5 in there, and that kind of build that overcorrection into your case. You'll notice that I did have her on some class two elastics, although these were worn just at night, more or less for some backup. Um, tried to minimize, she she didn't like the, she felt her teeth were out too far, she didn't like that. So I just had her wear those at night just to kind of back up any potential you know flaring that could have occurred in aligning these anterior teeth. And again, we love it at the curve of speed like you'd normally do. And I added some um, bite ramps to help with the bite opening. Okay, so, you know, good aligner mechanics, couple things probably could have overcorrected and should have, looking back on it. But again, great patient, extremely compliant. Here we are at seven months. And you can see this tooth, had I moved it maybe slightly a millimeter forward, I overcorrected the position. I probably would have nailed it, right? And this tooth as well, you know, we just didn't really get, I think the problem with this tooth was that we had some tight contacts. I didn't create enough space. I think had I created the space, tooth would have rotated fully and we would have had a little bit better extrusion. So what's beautiful about this is seven months of treatment, which is just amazing to me and amazing to the patient. I mean, she's one happy patient, right? And I'm going to go back in there now and all I have to deal with is probably those two teeth, right? Everything else looks fabulous, right? So you take all your attachments off, you, you know, reinsert attachment maybe on that lateral and optimize attachment and you call it a day. And our patients typically when they get their refinement aligners, they're changing them twice a week. So unless there's a lot of movement that's happening, but in something like this, just two teeth, very simple. This gal, you know, she's going to be finished probably in, in another, I'd, I'd say eight weeks and, and we're, we're done, you know, nine month treatment. Looking at her progress pano at seven months, look at the PDLs. I mean, um, I've seen after 32 years of practice, I've seen my fair share of um, aligners, or I'm sorry, uh, panos, uh, not so much with aligners, but definitely with fixed appliances where you see a lot of widened PDLs, uh, especially, and, you know, during the active phase of treatment, and you can see it really looks very good, very healthy. So here is a nice composite before and after, and we're looking at seven months. This tooth did a really nice job and tracked very well, okay? This one, Probably too tight, needed to pay attention to aligner biomechanics, right? But all in all, um, looking pretty good and finishing up 
probably another, I'd say, six to eight weeks max. Let's look at Amy. And this case is a little bit more challenging. Um, she was referred in um, by her, um, well, a combination of her dentist and periodontist. She is a, a, a lifelong Bruxer, and that she came in and said, yes, I have all this recession and these ab fractions. She even knew the word. I guess her dentist has educated her very well because I, I've been, I grind my teeth. I grind my teeth terribly. But I really don't like the way they're sticking out. I'm really concerned, um, and I'm here to get Invisalign. So she's 55 years old. You can see the narrow arches, the flared teeth. You can see the ab fractions and the loss of um, gingiva, you know, from the recession. Initial pano, you know, basically unremarkable, except for she's missing her third molars and loads of dental work from the posterior, right, from all the bruxing she's done over the years. One thing that's nice about Invisalign, we tell patients, is that once you have those on, um, you really can't wear out your, I mean, the, the bruxing, I mean, they can still clench, and I guess in a way you can still kind of brux, but a lot of the damage that they've been doing, at least to their um, teeth, is is prevented now because of the plastic. So she's mild class two. We're not going to correct class two. Um, and the, the periodontist is going to kind of oversee her as we're in treatment. There was talk about doing some grafts before we started. He wanted to wait and just kind of see how it went. So that was the plan. So I'll show you her setup. And again, you know, her complaint really was she didn't like her narrow arches. She felt her smile was very narrow and felt like her front teeth were being pushed outward. So you'll see when I, uh, you know, run the clench egg, we'll start with the upper. I'm gonna to try to change this arch form. We got a very severely rotated lateral. And for those of you, you know, on this uh, webinar with me tonight, I know some of you are going, well, gosh, Donna, why didn't you do, you know, mops on those laterals, right? And I, you know, I'd say, hey, you know what, that's not a bad idea. And I'd say, yeah, it's a great idea. And um, had I been paying attention to it more, maybe I would have added that along with the vibration, okay? I, I don't do, like, full mouth mops, okay? I may do selected areas. So for example, you know, on this particular patient, I probably wouldn't have done, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I guess I'm one of these people, I'm just like a little shy about doing mops everywhere. So I would have waited to see how she responded. And if we were really having challenges with these teeth rotating or positioning, I would have gone back in and suggested that I add, you know, a couple of, you know, sites around these laterals to help those teeth move. And that's kind of more or less how I utilize mops. It's more targeted areas, teeth that are, you know, troublesome, um, teeth that aren't tracking very well for whatever reason, even though, you know, the patient's wearing it 22 hours. So you can see here again, if I had to, you know, make a comment, you know, you got to make sure when you do these rotations that you have a lot of room or enough room, I shouldn't say a lot, but enough room created to allow that those laterals to rotate. So you've got to remember your aligner mechanics, but you can see the arch with change. And I know some of you are going, oh my gosh, with all that recession, you're, you're, you're expanding her out. Now you've got to remember a couple things here. A, I'm not going to get that expansion, not even close, probably about half of what you see is what I'll get, right? Uh, number two, she's being followed closely by her periodontist. She's going in, you know, almost as much as she sees me, she's seeing him. And we're, you know, he's kind of monitoring the situation. And, you know, see, I've had it happen where, you know, somewhere along the line, they go, okay, doc, stop. We're going to put the graphs on and then we'll, we'll resume or we'll, you know, redo or you can't expand anymore, right? So you'll notice here again uh, some challenging movements. What are the challenging movements down here? These lateral incisors, right? So some of you would probably go in and say, well, Donna, I'm going to go in here first with mops and then I'm going to use my VPRO5 as well. And I wouldn't argue with you. I'd, I'd actually agree. I think that's a great idea. I just didn't do it. Doesn't say I wouldn't do it if maybe those teeth weren't tracking. But you can see. We created some decent space to get those teeth lined up, nice, serious uh, attachments on those laterals. 
no elastics on her. I, I told her we weren't really going to, um, you know, fully correct any sort of class two situation. And, and she may be left with a little bit of overjet unless we did a little bit of IPR on the upper. So she's fully aware. Here she is at eight months. And, you know, at this point, we're more or less done. You know, the periodontist is ready to do the grafting on her. I don't really have any other movements that I want to do. This was a, a picture I snapped. She was just in a couple of weeks ago um, for an evaluation. And her next step is to pretty much get all these attachments off and um, go ahead and, and get some retainers made. But eight months of treatment. And if you recall how rotated that uh, upper right two was, um, it positioned pretty well in about eight months. I mean, again, I would have not expected this to occur. She's thrilled. I mean, I would have never expected this to occur in eight months. I mean, she's totally thrilled, loves her new smile, is ready for the next step of her, you know, the grafting that's going to occur now. She told me um, she was so happy that she was able to, that we offer the, the, the vibration device during the treatment because she said there was no way. She said, you know what? She said, eight months is about as long as I could have done this for. I, I'm just, you know, I'm just ready to be done. And that's kind of, I think, the the mantra I hear from most adults. You know, I think you got about a year and you got to get it done um, with a lot of these adults. Here she, here's Michael, a 39-year-old, deep bite, uh, more or less a, a, a dental class one. A Brexer as well. He's got some wear. You can see the wear on his uh, anterior teeth, right? And his his biggest complaint is overbite and crowding. And Pano again shows some, you know, wisdom teeth are gone. Nothing too remarkable there. History of Brexing and a close of wear and some crowding. And again, Invisalign and the Pro 5. Again, we include it in the treatment fee. Um, for the longest time, we were offering it as an additional option, right? And telling the patient, well, it just adds whatever, $25 to your monthly payments or whatever it came out to be, okay? And I don't know what it was, but it was about a 50-50, right? And, and, I, and I have to say, I think what really prompted me to start just giving it to everybody and just raising the, the price point on our Invisalign for the adult patient was, it was very clear. It's like I had a whole control group going in my office. I had the group of patients that said, no, I don't want, I don't want to pay the extra for that device. I'll just wear the aligners, you know, for two weeks. Right. And then I had the other group was, oh yeah, give it to me. I want to get out of these as soon as I can. Right. So I had my own kind of little study going on in my office and it was very clear, very quickly, what patients were doing better, having less appointments, less refinements, um, finishing faster. So I then decided everyone gets one and we just bumped up our price. We added an extra $400, $450 to our fee. And um, yep, it makes the price maybe a little bit higher, you know, than say some other competitors in the area, but you know, it doesn't matter because they're getting true value. You know, it's a, it's a value added option that they actually it's a value added appliance that they don't have an option. So they say, well, I really don't want it. Do I save any money? No, it's part of your treatment. This is what we prescribe. So looking at Michael here, again, let's look at the lower arch crowding. Again, don't throw your aligner biomechanics out the window. You still have to set the cases up well. Okay. The um, vibration device is not going to um, take the place of a good clean check. Okay, so again, you know, creating the space, you know, getting the arch form for him. The biggest deal, honestly, was um, you know, getting your curvus V uh, leveled out. And I, I've had some challenging curves of V to level out. I think we all have, you know, those really severe deep bites. And again. A combination of maybe the vibration and, and, and mops would be helpful here. You know, adding some mops to the lower uh, incisor intrusion area, right? Just doing it from, say, you know, canine to canine, right? Could be helpful. You can see it's quite the clencher. You can see the wear. 
And again, I'm one of these docs that just says, okay, I'm going to set this up, you know, as best as I know how, see how the patient responds, and then reevaluate, you know, at the, at the second stage or when I go to order additional aligners, right? Again, looking at the upper arch, he had, uh, we added the, uh, the bite ramps, rotated tooth, okay? And I point out all these rotated teeth quite a bit because, you know, in my experience, um, these laterals, they're the toughest teeth. And I think we'd all agree they are, right? They, they tend not to do what we want to do, okay? So, so far, I think you've seen two cases. This is the third where you have some, you know, I would say, you know, movements on laterals that potentially could be problematic, right? Um, now, these aren't getting any sort of blue or black dot on them, which kind of surprises me, whereas the other two cases did. But I think we'd all agree laterals are really problem teeth. They, they don't track well. They don't do what we want, okay? And what I found really remarkable, the more I started using the vibration on patients, how well these laterals behave themselves, basically. You know, they started to go where they were, where I had planned them to go, right? You know, they weren't misbehaving. Now, the only time, like I said in the first case, is I didn't give the patient enough space. So it's really critical, you know, you have to still pay attention to good aligner biomechanics. So you can see as end result, you know, pretty basic setup, um, trying to just, you know, get the deep bite corrected, open his bite, probably could make a case here for maybe opening up a little bit more than I did, maybe a little bit more intrusion here. You know, if I had to critique it, I'd say that's probably not enough. And I'd probably drop it down another millimeter because I'm not getting all of that. I'm getting about half of that. So um, over-treatment is critical, in, especially in these adult cases. But what's really nice is when you're using the high frequency vibration, look at really how well those laterals tracked in five months. It's really quite remarkable. And you know, you hear the comments from the patients going, wow, this is a really amazing. I'm like, I can't believe how, how good my teeth look. Now we're not quite done yet uh, with Michael, right? Um, he's happy, except he says to me, the lower didn't really get where I needed it to be. So we have a little issue down here, and again, it was you know a problem not so much with him not wearing them enough because he actually was wearing them extremely well. It was a bit of a biomechanic error on my fault, on my part, not creating enough space to allow that central incisor to rotate. But again, very happy patient, five months of treatment. So I think all of you looking at this, you know, basically what we're doing here. In fact, this was the day he came in and we actually scanned him, we took all his attachments off and scanned him uh, for a refinement. And um, typically what I'll do in the refinement stage, you know, I may not put any more attachments on the upper at all because I think he's pretty much done. Um, the lower, we'll have to see, I may want to do a little bit more leveling of the curve of speed. His bite definitely is improved. Maybe I want to get a little bit more opening. And in that case, I probably will have to add some attachments in the premolar and canine region. But again, looking at this, you might say, gosh, Donna, you might have, what, maybe eight more weeks of treatment, seven months. And I know um, another conversation that comes up when I talk about this all the time is, you know, well, how do you, how do you set up payment plans for these patients? Because they're finishing so quickly. And um, it's, it's really how you word it in the uh, new patient exam. And it's a treatment coordinator issue. And I know there's an upcoming webinar in August coming up for TCs. And, and hopefully that'll be addressed. But we always let the patient know that the treatment, uh, the payment plan, um, does not reflect the treatment visits, right? It is a courtesy. We offer them a payment plan. They can certainly pay in full and get a nice little discount or they can do a payment plan and these are the options we give them. I'm not afraid to finish him in seven months or even eight months and still have him pay for a year. Okay, so he might have four more months of payments. Okay, or even sometimes, you know, we let him go out sometimes a year, 
past expected treatment time. So maybe his treatment plan was 18 months or his payment plan was 18 months, right? And some of you are thinking, well, that's just insane. He's not going to pay. But these patients will pay you. I mean, they're happy. They love with the results, you know. Yes, we give them a retainer. We get them back in. You know, we, we don't necessarily just kick them out the door. But again, they're happy. They realize the payment plan is the payment plan has nothing to do with treatment visits. So you got to make that clear. And you can see in five months, it's really pretty remarkable. I was not seeing this in five months with my control patients who were not using uh, the, the device. Okay. And if you aren't, you know, honestly, if you're really sitting on the fence and going, well, I just don't know what to do, Donna. I, I really am not comfortable. I don't think I really believe in these devices. Then do kind of what I was doing. I was offering it uh, to patients and they could pay extra for it, right? So some did, some didn't. And then I would we'd kind of track it. <laughs> so we knew the patients that had it and we knew the patients that didn't, right? So you have your own control in the office. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to compare apples to apples, right? I mean, sometimes you might have a patient that, decided to get it and they were easy, right? And a patient who didn't, and they were hard, but you'd probably have enough of them that you could really um, get some data and you'll get a clinical sense. I mean, with doctors, it's all about the clinical sense. I mean, you know, from a clinical standpoint, what's working and what's not. And I think it's just quite remarkable when you look at this lateral and five months later, it's, it's smack dab where I, I wanted it to be. Um, and we kind of, this tooth here, probably should have focused again aligner mechanics. What are those mechanics? You know, you don't throw those out the window just because you're using a vibration device. You still have to overcorrect that position and have, I should have brought that tooth in about a millimeter lingual when it finished. Let's look at um, a situation that's a little bit more challenging, a class two situation. Uh, well, she's gonna wear some class two elastics. She, 20 year old Mariah doesn't like her, uh, she comes in saying, I don't like my front teeth. They feel like they're sticking out or have an overbite, right? And her narrow arches, she's missing a lower right lateral, a very deep bite. There's the pano, you can see on the pano, the missing tooth, missing also wisdom teeth, and the tooth is missing congenitally. I do not like my overbite, she says. So we have a mild dental class two, deep bite, narrow arches. And we are gonna use some class two elastics uh, in this situation. So I will show you Miss Mariah's um, initial clincheck. And we use the elastics more as a, a simulation approach and didn't program any uh, sequential distalization. Uh, quite honestly, on an adult patient, I usually don't do sequential distalization, um, mostly because of uh, compliance issues. I get concerned that if they don't wear them enough, they they end up with a lot of space between their teeth, but the teeth never really distalize. So you'll see here, we we'll do it from the side view. I mean, she's not really terribly class two, but I was concerned enough about her overjet when she presented to give her the class two elastics to really kind of control any sort of anterior movement. And you'll notice too in the staging of the case, that we program some IPR. So again, we look at it from the occlusal view. What do I got again, right? You got a crazy lateral, and we all love our lateral incisors with the liners, right? So if nothing else, you know, you can make a case for using um, high frequency vibration devices, such as VPRO5, just to keep your laterals in place, right? Because they are challenging teeth. And one thing you'll notice, well, here, I'll do the, the video for you. Um, you know, I'm creating space through buccal expansion, but we also did add some IPR to help tuck that tooth in place because we didn't want to, I did not want to increase her overjet. In fact, you know, you can see here, I'm, I actually decreased a little bit of the flaring of that one tooth. And on the lower arch, we pretty much, you know, maintained what we had. A lot of it was expansion. But I, again, if you think about your cases and where you always have your hiccups, right? Lateral incisors tend to be one of them, right? And I'm using, you know, in both situations here, I'm using, let me just center it, I'm using an optimized attachment on this lateral as well on this one, right? And 
you can see we're getting some rotation and some extrusion on both of those teeth. And very challenging movements on, on lateral incisors, right? And again, lower arch, there really wasn't as much of a hazard on the lower arch other than these teeth back here, this one in particular um, being more uh, lingually displaced. But that takes space to push that out buckly. And a lot of times, I've had it happen to me, I've lost tracking on those teeth um, and not gotten a response, right? The tooth, the liner kind of goes in, but that premolar is not fitting anywhere close to the plastic, right? So aligner biomechanics, critical. You want to check your occlusion. You want to make sure that you're free and clear in the anterior region, that you don't have contacts here. I like seeing the red in the posterior because it tells me I'm going to be hopefully having some nice, decent contacts at the end. I'm trying to avoid a posterior open bite at the end, right? She's always going to have some overjet just because of that two size discrepancy, right? Which we all know comes from, you know, checking our Bolton, right? Now it doesn't give it to you, but you can just know that you're, you've got one because she's missing a lateral. So again, looking at curves of speed. And these are all things that, you know, okay, so she's 20, she's a young adult, but, you know, these are the types of things I know I struggle with on adult patients, leveling out curves of speak, you know, getting that arch leveled out on an adult patient is, is, can be very challenging. So she's been doing a fabulous job, you know, very, very motivated young lady, wearing her elastics. Here she is, eight months into treatment. This is basically um, her end of her first stage of aligners, okay? So we're going to be doing a, re a refinement or ordering additional aligners. So let's look where we are. And you remember, you know, that tooth, these teeth had a drop down. This tooth probably didn't do its job in intruding as well as it could have, but look at that lower alignment, right? Look at that premolar. I mean, it still could come out a little bit more buckly, but again, eight months of treatment and a patient who's compliant, you know, I don't even beat them up anymore and ask them um, how much they're wearing them. I, you know, I, I look in there and if I see things are tracking fairly decently, I, I do, um, you know, command them and say, oh, you're doing a good job, you know, about how many hours, you know, before I'd be like, you know, you got to wear them more, it's not going to work. That conversation is pretty much gone, which I love absolutely love it because now I don't I feel like it's a positive visit and not so much that they're getting <laughs> um, reprimanded for poor cooperation here's her pano and this is what I was saying before I mean look at um, look at this progress x-ray you know no widened PDLs everything looks just really healthy right and that's you know what I see over and over again um, with these patients and again eight months of treatment she, I had estimated, I had told her, um, I was expecting about 18 months. Now, that's the other thing I want to mention is when you're in the uh, consult room with the patient, I never tell them, you know, using this device is going to cut their treatment time in half, okay? What I do tell them is that it's going to allow the aligners to work better because they will seat on your teeth more fully. You'll have better engagement. I also tell them that it will reduce significantly their discomfort. And I think that is a big selling point. You know, I said, you know, honestly, your first aligner may bother you a little bit. And maybe when you switch out like that first day, you may find some discomfort. But without this device, your teeth are going to be a lot more sore. So that is the selling point. And I tell them, oh, and by the way, you'll be able to take You'll get a new one every seven days. And the advantages of that is that, you know, they'll never really discolor. They'll always look nice and clean and fresh. So these are talking points that you got to, you know, start like telling the patient even before they start asking the question, right? So in their head, they're going, oh, okay. Um, so why do I need this? You know, what's in it for me, right? So that, you know, changing every week, seating better, not having you know, to wear, you know, yucky aligners, you know, that get kind of discolored 
if anybody there that's listening has had Invisalign, I mean, I had them uh, about seven years ago, and I got to tell you, like day ten, they start looking pretty bad. Like day seven or eight, you want to change. So that's where VPro5 really comes in handy. You can tell the patient, oh yeah, you better change them. They'll always look crystal clear. You never have to worry, okay? Because they're on the internet searching and they're reading this stuff and they're coming in. They may not ask the question, but they're thinking it, okay? So when she came in or when these people come in, I, I give them a range, you know? I'll say, okay, Mariah, well, treatment time is going to be between 12 and 18 months. You know, and I'll say, you know, some patients will finish, you know, more on the 12 month range. Some people will probably go a little bit longer, but I really anticipate it should not go any longer than 18 months, you know, unless you're not wearing them or you're not using your Repro 5. Okay. And that way you're not like, I, I always find it's better to kind of overestimate. Every once in a while I get a patient that's upset because I, you know, I told them it was going to be, you know, 18 months and they finished in 12 and they're kind of like, you know, upset about it, which is kind of weird, but that doesn't happen too often. So that's how you have to be careful about how you word this. We never promise a 50% reduction. You know, it's, it's all about your liners work better, no pain, you get to change them every seven days, they stay clean. And by the way, you know, it, it can reduce your treatment time, you know, as long as you're doing what you know, we, we recommend that you do. So, I shared with you so far the why. Now the million dollar question is the how and the what. Now, you've seen the why, you've seen some results, and I've shared a little bit of the how, and I'm going to share with you even more what we discovered. And I think these are really important points. And the how is every patient receives it as part of their inclusive treatment fee. It is put into the fee. Okay. There's no option. It's not, you know, you can get this. You know, it's not an add-on. It's there. If they don't want it, well, they still pay for it. It's prescribed to use five minutes a day every day. I, I do tell patients if they feel like on certain days, like maybe when they change them out, they want to do it a couple times a day, it's not going to hurt them. Patients in our office are seen every 12 weeks. So early, I was talking about scheduling efficiency. So uh, we literally give them a box. The, the first box of aligners has um, 11 in them plus the template, right? So we just take the template out and add another aligner in there, and then they get the whole box, okay? And then every time they come in, they get another box. Now, you'll notice here um, in the second stage or the additional aligner order, we may uh, give them all their aligners or you know, it just depends because they're usually changing at that point um, twice a week and it says it right here. So on the additional liner stages, generally everybody's going twice a week. So when they come in, a lot of those patients are just getting their entire box because they're going to be done in maybe eight weeks, right? And then they're coming back in. And typically uh, at that point, I have confidence that they're going to be done, and we schedule them for uh, removal of any attachments, and then we scan them for their final retainers. It definitely has impacted the patient experience. And like I said to you earlier, patients are thrilled, they're happy. They're, you know, it's it's a great pat practice booster. I mean, these patients are going out to dinner over the weekend, talking with their friends, their other family members about this experience. And patients are tracking well, um, even when they're less than 22 hours a day. And in the very, very, very beginning, I said, what was the thing that was driving me crazy? And I know it probably drives you, a lot of you crazy, is the adult patient, they don't do 22 hours. I mean, if they do like 18, that's like amazing, right? And rather than like kind of beating them up and making them feel bad, you know, I just... I find that, you know, even if they're getting them in like 16 hours, I had one patient tell me that she'd only been wearing them pretty much after dinner. I mean, this was after the fact. And we still got a really good result. So, again, um, it's it's been one of those things that I think has just taken away that, like, oh, at the appointment, like, oh, I got to tell my doctor. She's going to see I'm not wearing them. She's going to be mad at me or she's going to beat me up or I'm going to feel, you know, I'm being scolded. 
And last but not least, it has added value to our treatment and differentiated practice. So, you know, it's a fairly competitive environment that we live in, right? And there's a lot of um, options for patients today when it comes to, especially, you know, clear aligners, you know, there's, um, you know, they can get them delivered to their house, right? <laughs> Um, or they can come see a specialist, right, and get them um, by offering, you know, added value. And people, you know, want added value. They want to know that they're getting the best, you know. And adding something like a high-frequency device like VPRO5 adds value to that treatment, even if it's, say, you know, more than, say, you know, obviously more than Small Direct Club, but maybe the highest price in town. But, you know, you're offering this extra value and an experience that's going to make their treatment just whew, just smooth sailing, right? Where their maybe friend didn't have that option, just changing them every two weeks, they're turning yellow at day eight, their teeth are sore all the time, and they're on their fifth refinement, right? This is what will set you apart. And to uh, conclude, um, I have here um, – this picture, and I thought it was kind of an interesting picture I took in Chile recently of, of the Andes Mountains, and I, I took this really on my, my iPhone. It's an iPhone 7. I mean, it's not even that sophisticated. I mean, it's a nice iPhone, but I took this picture, and to me, this every time I look at this, I think of the, the beauty of it and the simplicity of it, and and that's kind of what you know Vpro5 is to me. It's the beauty of it and the simplicity of it that really allows um, it to be such an integral part of our practice. So if anybody has any questions, I'm here now to answer those questions. And I guess you'll type those in for me. Um, and you can reach me at uh, my or my ortho coaching at Gmail if you have any specific questions about any of the cases I showed tonight. And I'm going to try to open up the question tab. Great. And I see here... Um, why not IPR to create some space? Um, and this came from Paul. And reduce the, you know, I totally agree with you, especially on, um, it was Miss Amy. Um, she didn't want it done. Uh, we talked about it, and she decided it was not something she wanted done. Um, you know what it was with her? I think she felt like my teeth are already worn down. I tried to explain it, it was not the top of the teeth. I was doing the sides but she didn't want it done. So um, she may change her mind. You know, honestly, I've had patients, I put them in retainers and then we see them in a few visits, you know, three, four months later and they come back and they say, hey doc, is it too late to get that done? I really don't like this now. I really think I, I would like to have it done. And then I'll just go back in and do another quick refinement, right? So um, I agree with you. Totally, totally, absolutely was a must, but patient declined. It says here, hello, I want to know about the black space. Yeah, again, IPR. And some of these patients, so the only patient that's done um, was Amy, the one with all the recession. Everybody else, those were um, end of her their first stages. So all those patients that I showed you, except for Amy, the one with all the recession, uh, that was their end of aligners. So they're all in process of getting refinements now or additional liners. So some of those patients will be getting IPR and be getting some fine tuning, but Amy was pretty much happy and she just wanted to be done. And thank you. Cheers from Brazil. Thank you, Dr. Ramos. It says here, do you use VPRO5 for teens? Great question. Because you notice I've talked all about adults only and Right now, we don't. And the reason for it is I just don't have the same challenges. <laughs> Remember that first slide in the beginning, the things that drove me crazy? <laughs> or drive you crazy or drive everybody crazy? Um, I, I know it's hard to believe, but I get pretty, I get really good compliance with my teens. And, I, and, a, and the whole teen thing is in a whole other lecture. How do I do that? How do I get them to wear it? Um, so I don't, but I, I do know I have colleagues, a really good friend of mine, uh, Gary Brigham, he does it and he gets some fabulous results and he gets these kids in and out of treatment really fast. So, I mean, maybe at some point I'll, I'll wrap that around my head that I'll do it on the teens because right now the teens change every seven days. And if I was going to use a VPRO5 on them, I probably haven't changed twice a week, right? Because I mean, seriously, they, they track really well 
Um, their teeth move super well, and I don't have the same compliance issues as I do with my adults, but I haven't done it, and the main reason is more of a systems thing in my office because we have a lot of brand new employees that are in the clinical part of my practice right now, and they're still in training, and we're still kind of working through some of our systems, and I just don't want to confuse their lives too much by having people be on different time frames. So they know when a patient starts, it's seven days, but I'm totally up for trying it, and I do think that there probably is a place for it, um, especially for some of those teens that you know, come in and say, hey, I'm going off to college. You know, I need to get done, like, you know, as soon as possible. It says here, do you have a sense of adult compliance? That's a good one, uh, Dr. Pickard. Yeah. Um, you know, we do, we don't check it. I know you can check it, you know, but we, we haven't been doing that. Um, I know that they're coming out um, with a new design and a redesigned device that I think is going to be pretty cool. And it'll be an app, and and uh, it'll really allow us to really check a little bit more closely how well they're doing it, or ask them, you know, to show us uh, on their phone. Um, so it's more of like I just ask them, and I think you know you do enough of these cases, you kind of get a sense on who's using it and who's not. But we typically every visit ask them how's it going, um, how do your teeth feel, you know, are you finding the vibration helps, you know. So we, we do have that conversation with them, but I don't have, I'm not sitting there actually like analyzing, you know, how many times they wore it, you know, the last week. Does the patient uh, with, oh, with the aligners on, good question. So does the patient use the V-Pro 5 with or without the aligners on? Always with the aligners on. Great question. Patients ask that too, actually. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that, yes. They have to have their aligners in their mouth. That's how we uh, recommend that they do it. Yep. And then um, Dr. Sullivan, if you did do IPR, uh, when would you do the IPR? So good question. Typically, I know this is, sounds very strange, um, but the way I do it typically is either at the very end of the first phase. So I would have planted it in there at the very tail end, like maybe the last two or three or four aligners before the end of the first set, or the very, 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 very first stage of refinement. And in our office, just so you know, our system, we have a system in place that every patient gets a refinement. So the patient's told up front, you're gonna have um, two stages. You know, the first stage is about 80% of the treatment. The second stage is gonna be the fine tuning. And there are the occasional patient that gets a second stage because we still have a little bit more work to do, right? So we tell them up front, so they get, we call it an automatic refinement. So I usually, um, I mean, probably 80% of the time, uh, Jennifer, I do the IPR at the very beginning of the first refinement. So that was my plan for Amy. And then when she came in and we were talking about it, she said, no, I really just want to be done. I don't want, um, I don't want IPR. I'm happy. I just, you know, this is better than I anticipated. You know, and it's kind of funny. And I think we all, we all have those patients. We have some that just, you know, they're happy. They think it's great. And you're looking at it going, well, I would do this, this and that. And then you have those that they'll drive you nuts because they'll be like looking at a tooth and you'll go, there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. You know, and, you know, so I always take the ones that are really happy and I figure it's a gift because I'm going to have about five others probably in the next week that are going to be obsessed about a, a rotation on a lower incisor that I can't even see with my scopes in. Uh, what would be the percentage of patients that giving them the vape will not use it? You know, it's, you know, honestly, yeah, there's probably about 5%. I would say it's about 5% that don't use it. And it's kind of a bummer. So, um, you know, what we um, have done, you know, we've had a few who just, you know, came in and said, hey, I'm just not using this. You know, I just, you know, I don't, my teeth don't bother me. I'm able to change every week, whatever they tell me. And if they're tracking pretty well and they really seriously, you know, feel like they don't need it, that's a waste. Um, you know, I'll tell them to bring it back in. You know, I don't give them the money back. So if they're thinking, well, I'm going to, you know, discount their fee by $400 or whatever, I don't. But there's probably about a 5% fallout rate with it, which is kind of unfortunate, but it does happen. 
Um, so are you using with the teens at all? I think I went through that. Um, no, not yet. I find the teens wear their aligners really well and the seven day cycle works perfect for them. Could the patient use V? Yes, they can use it more than one time a day. Yeah, absolutely. And I have some that do. Um, they tell me when they change them out, they'll use them a couple of times that first day just to really, see. They, they say it's like a, it's like a massaging their gums. So yes, they could, it's not going to hurt them. And I encourage them to do it. Regarding those laterals, would you use a sash attachment? No, nope, it wasn't anything wrong with my attachment. Um, I just didn't use good aligner biomechanics. I didn't create enough space. Those contacts, if you went in there with a um, piece of dental floss, it was tight. I didn't create enough space. And it didn't matter what kind of attachment was on there, the, those teeth wouldn't have moved all the way without space. It's um, aligner mechanics is very different than braces mechanics and space is one thing that you constantly have to think about creating space creating space and um, and that's one thing I think you know with laterals especially it happens I think even that last case I showed you the premolar the lower left premolar was lingual it didn't quite make it out buckly and again I didn't create enough space I guarantee it I go in there with a dental floss it's tight You've got to have some space. Thank you, Dr. Ramos, for your um, kudos. How much do I charge for a full Invisalign case? Right now, for an adult, okay, um, it, it's it's $5,900, and that includes the VPro5. And I don't know where you practice, but um, in our neck of the woods, it's probably on the higher end of uh, pricing, to be quite honest with you. Um, so, but that includes the B-Pro5. Um, we include uh, free teeth whitening as well. Um, during the treatment, we give them these, these little gel pens that they can put the aligners, uh, the, the bleach into their aligners, and they love that. Do I get any complaints? Never. Patients love it. Not one single complaint at all relates to B-Pro5. I guess the only thing I heard one patient tell me, okay, she said, oh, you know, my mouth is kind of small, you know, and when I put it in, I have to like pull my cheeks out of the way, but I don't know. It, I've never had anybody really complain at all. Um, does the uh, No, never any discomfort. Does the patient say there's any discomfort? Nope. Um, I haven't had anybody complain about it. In fact, it's the exact opposite. They tell me it makes their teeth feel better. It's like they call it the tooth massager. It like makes their achy teeth feel so much better. Is there any study about resorptions? You know, I didn't, I haven't seen anything about it. Um, my experience in general, and again, I've treated probably close to 2,500 Invisalign cases. I don't think I've seen a single root, I, I've not seen root resorption on a single one of my Invisalign cases. And that, um, you know, over 2,500 of them. So I would expect that these patients aren't going to, start presenting with root resorption. I just haven't seen it. I mean, even in patients that showed up with root resorption to start, I didn't even see that it got worse. So, um, yeah, to me, and quite honestly, I think once we start to switch to self-ligating brackets and much lighter forces, I stopped seeing the resorption even on the uh, braces patients. So now I don't have any study and I honestly haven't seen any. If you had to pick the typical adult patient, um, what one would it be? Oh man, I would say uh, for sure patients with those um, lateral rotations like I showed you, the deep bites for sure, uh, definitely closing space, crowding. I mean, I don't really prejudge them. Any adult gets it, you know? Obviously, maybe some adults need it more than others, you know? So those adults, we kind of really, you know, I think, you know what it is, if you really want to make sure that you get compliance with this, you really have to make sure that there is um, uh, you're either your treatment coordinator or your staff member. Whoever it is that's going to go over this really sets the value. So um, if you have, by any chance, anybody in your office in Invisalign right now, ha let them have one. Key team members right now, 
um, has uh, aligners and she has a V-Pro5 and so does her fiance. So she has a lot of experience. So when she sits down with a patient and goes over it with them, it's, it's pretty compelling. You know, uh, you've got to make sure the, um, when, when it's being introduced to the patient, how important it is, how special it is that they're getting this, um, and be excited about it. You know, the staff member has to be super excited about it for them. And then you'll, you're going to get some great results. Um, as you said, it's a very simple appliance. I see and understand the benefits, but it seems overpriced. Um, I mean, you know, for me, I don't know where you are in your um, utilization of it. And I would talk with your local rep about pricing, but I do know they offer some very competitive pricing, you know, when you're ordering, you know, more than one at a time. So again, um, for us, it works. It, it decreases treatment time, it decreases visits, it's just more efficient. So I think, um, yes, it's very simple, but it, it, um, it works very well. And, you know, I think it's one of those things that you, you kind of have to give it a try to see how well it does for your patients. And then you'll start to say, wow, you know, this is definitely, this is definitely a plus for my practice. And I can see how I want to give this to everybody and, and make sure all my, at least all my adults, you know, have it. Cause to me, the adult patient, honestly, they're the hardest ones in the practice to manage, you know, as far as compliance and just overall uh, expectations of results. And, and, and to me, it, it's a match made in heaven because you get adults that are excited, they're getting great results and they're getting them faster than ever before they have a chance to burn out. <laughs> and they don't even have to wear them all the time. I don't tell them that. I still tell them 22 hours, but I know that they, they kind of lie about it a little bit, but I don't even care anymore because it still works. So anyway, I want to thank everyone for being with me tonight. I hope this was helpful and um, I understand it's going to be recorded in about, I guess, a week or an hour. I'm sorry. I think an hour from now, you're going to get an email. You have to fill out uh, a questionnaire and uh, a couple questions to get your CE credits. So thank you for being with me and have a good evening, everybody.